Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. In today's video, I am going to explain how to use timers and counters in Siemens PLCs using Tia Portal. The example which I am going to take is shown over here. A small setup that is shown is of a stamping device. What will happen is that when the worker will place a part in this position, a sensor B1 will sense its presence. And now if the worker presses the start button, the cylinder 1 will extend and stamp the device. It will keep on stamping or keep on pressing the part for 4 seconds. And after 4 seconds, it is going to retract and the counter will count 1. So once the machine has been used for maybe 10 times, the machine is going to go into a rest mode. So this wait LED will turn on and the worker cannot use this machine again for let's suppose 20 seconds. And after 20 seconds, the machine can be used again. So this is what we are going to program. In the TIA portal environment, I've already created a project. And the very first thing is I need to create the tags. So I'm going to go into the tags table so that I can define all the variables and all the things that I'm going to use. So the very first thing I need is a start button. So I need a start tag. It will have an input address, so it is all right. Secondly, I need a part presence sensor. Let me name it as sensor B1 as I've named it in the diagram. So that will be my sensor B1. After that, I need a cylinder one output. So it is cylinder one and this time it is going to be an output. So I'm going to change the address to output address. And it is going to be bit zero. Then I also need a weight LED as an output. So let me name that tag as weight LED. And once again, it is an output. So I'm good with it. Apart from these things, I need timer settings as well. For example, for stamping time, I need a preset value of four seconds. And for waiting time, I need a preset value of 20 seconds. And for the counter, I need a preset value of 10. One way is to use these values along with the timers when we are going to insert those in the ladder diagram. But I won't recommend that thing because later on, if you want to change these timing values, it will be cumbersome to find those timers in the program and then modify over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define user constants for these things. So in this user constant section, I'm going to define, for example, stamp time. The data type will be this time time and the value is going to be T hash 4S, which means four seconds. Similarly, I'm going to define the wait time as well. Once again, the data type is time and the time for waiting will be T hash 20 seconds. And for the counter, I'm going to use maybe the tag name count part. This time it is going to be an integer. So I can type in integer over here and it is going to be 10. So that's it. Now, no matter where I'm using these times or preset values in my program, I can always come over here, change the times over here, and it will automatically change in the program. So I don't need to go into the uh, program and find these things over there. So that's it, these are all my tags. Now I can go to this main program and start programming. So the very first thing is I need a start button. So I have inserted a start button and I'm going to label it as start. Then if the part is present, only then the cylinder should extend. So I need in series the part presence sensor. So it is going to be sensor B1. And now the cylinder should extend. So as an output, I am writing cylinder 1. Sorry. Uh, so right now, for as long as the start button is pressed and sensor B1 is showing the presence of the part, the cylinder will remain extended. And as I leave the start button, the cylinder will come back. But I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to latch the cylinder. So for latching, we have already done this thing in the previous videos. I'm going to use cylinder one over here as well. So once cylinder one is on, I want timer to run as well. So I need a new rung. And over here, I once again need cylinder. If it is on, it will turn on a timer. So for timer, you can come over here in the, this section of basic instructions. And if you drop down this timer operation menu, 
you can see timers over here. I'm going to use this T on timer. You can click on it and then drag it over here to place wherever you want it. But I want it to be placed over here. You can name this timer as you want. So maybe I call it stamping timer. You cannot use spaces, so I need to add an underscore over here and OK. You can see the timer has automatically been created and all the things are there. For the preset value, you can assign directly, for example, T hash 4S over here. But this is what I told earlier, but this is what I talked about earlier that I won't recommend this thing. So we have already made a tag for this preset timer and I'm going to use that stamp time, which is over here. So if the timer is complete, I want this cylinder to turn off. So over here in this rung, I need the Q bit of this timer. That is the done that that is the done bit of this timer. So over here now I can use stamping timer. And with this stamping timer, there are two things. I can use the input and the qubit. So I'm going to use the qubit. So when this timer will be done, this thing will turn on, which means this normally close switch is going to open up and the cylinder is going to turn off. So another thing that I need is I need to count one when this timer has done timing. That will signify that one part has been processed. So I need a counter. So for the counters, you can come back over here in this section and in the counter operations, drop it down and you can see the counters present over here. I'm going to use the count up counter. So click and drag on it and place it over here. You can name this counter as maybe a part counter. So whenever this timer is done timing, the counter will get a power over here and it will count. For the preset value, once again, you can type in 10 directly over here or the number of counts you want this counter to count. But we have already defined a constant named as count part, which is shown over here. So I can select that. So after this, when this counter has counted till 10, we want a wait timer to run. So I need a new run now. And over here, I'm going to use the counter done bit, which is the counter qubit. The name of my counter is part counter. And inside this part counter, I have the qubit over, I have the qubit over here. So when this counter is done counting, this is going to go high. And after that, I need a timer. So once again, I'm going to use a new timer. I'm going to name it as wait timer. And the preset value over here would be this time, the wait time, which I have already defined. So once this timer is done, only then I can use the system once again. So over here, I'm inserting a normally closed switch that will disconnect the cylinder one with the power for as long as this timer is timing. After this timer has completed its timing, I'm going to reset the counter. So this means that as long as this timer is timing, the counter's qubit will remain high. So I can use the part counter's qubit over here. Like this. And when my timer has completed the timing, this thing is going to reset it. So for the reset pin over here, I can use the wait timer's done bit. So I guess that's it. We have programmed everything and now it's the time to check it. So you can start the simulation, but I have already started it. My simulator is running in the background. I only need to download this program into the simulator. So before downloading, I'm going to compile it to check if there are any errors. So there are no errors over here. So I can move this thing down once again. And now I can download it. If your simulator is already configured and running, then it will not take too much and you don't have to configure it again and again. We have talked about how to use the simulator in the previous video, so you can watch that if you don't know how to configure the simulator. So that's it, the downloading has completed. And in the simulator, now I need to go to this sims table over here 
I have already created a project. Please view the previous video in which I have uh, described how to use the simulator. So in the sims table, I'm going to uh, load all the project tags. So all the project tags are over here. And because I have used some timers and counters, these are all the tags related to it, but we are not going to use them. We are only going to use the tags which we have created. For example, the start sensor B1, cylinder one, and the other things. Before I can use these tags, I need to turn the monitoring on over here. Okay, so now let us test this thing. And over here, if I press this sensor B1, I have turned it on. You can see that over here, sensor B1 is on. And now if I push start button for some time and then push it again to close it, the timer is running and the counter will count to one. You can see a one over here. Okay, now the part is present. I'm going to press start again and then you can see the timer is running. I've turned off the start button. The timer is running and the counter is counting. So now the count has reached four. You can see over here the count has reached four. And if I do this for 10 times, that is the timer has reached 10, then the second timer will start timing. So let me keep the start button pressed so that the things go on a bit quickly. So you can see that the timer is now on 7, 8, and now it is going to be 9 and 10. So once it is 10, you can see this timer is now running. The timer is timing, and this switch has turned off. And now even I have pressed start and this part is present, the cylinder is not turning on. So after this wait time is off or the wait timer has completed its timing, you can see that this counter has once again reset. It has started from zero and the whole process can begin again. So dear learners, I hope you have understood how you can use timers and counters in the portal and you have understood the example which I have um, programmed over here. So if you have any questions or queries, I'm always available through YouTube comments and my email address. So till the next time, take care and goodbye.